The Milwaukee Bucks are heading to Las Vegas. They have defeated the New York Knicks 146 to 122 to advance to the semifinals of the NBA in-season tournament. The Bucks were lights out from three this evening, shooting 61% from three. Is it time for us to adjust expectations on how this team plays? We're also going to take a look at the Bucks' upcoming semifinals matchup against the Pacers and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks. I'm Camille Davis. In addition to this podcast right here, you can catch me weekly on the Technical File podcast, as well as Cheesehead TV's Carry the G and MKE. Joining me as always is Frank Madden, founder of BrewHoop.com and longtime voice of the pod. We appreciate you tuning in, and we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first watch or your first listen of the day, every single day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Frank, the Bucks put up quite the win this evening over the New York Knicks, as I mentioned. When you take a look at the numbers, really, it was that three-point shooting of the Bucks that helped them secure this victory tonight. Um, they shot 60% from the field as a whole, 60% uh, from three. In addition to that, that's how you win when you get beat <laughs> with points in the paint by 10, when you get beat at the free throw line, plus six or plus 16, yeah. And that three-point shooting came in handy for this Bucks team this evening. Yeah, I mean, the first game between these teams, you know, the Bucks also just shot the lights out from three and the Knicks did not shoot well from three at all. That's just something the Knicks can do. I know Justin and Alex um, in the preview that we did, the crossover they did with Locked On Knicks um, earlier today uh, talked a bit about, you know, just the fact that the Knicks don't generally shoot threes well. They don't seem like they should be this really good offensive team, but they've been that over the past mm -hmm. year plus. Um, so, you know, throw out your like Tibbs stereotypes about, you know, his teams and just being these sort of defense grinded out teams. Um, they're still grinding because they do a ton of work on the offensive glass. Um, weirdly enough, they, they did it tonight in spite of the fact that Mitchell Robinson had what four total rebounds and only think only one offensive rebound. He was a nightmare the last time these teams mm -hmm. faced each other. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's funny, right? I mean, especially at halftime, you see the Bucks up 75-72. It's a track meet, and they are shooting the shit out of the ball. I think they were like 12 to 17 or something like that from three. And you kind of look at it and you say, you know, this is one of these things where, okay, guys, like, you shoot that well, have that big of an advantage from three, and you're only winning by three? Like, ooh, I don't know if we like that. But they just kept doing it. All gas, no brakes, Camille. Um, you know, that's That's the new motto. Um, you know, forget the hard hat, you know, lunch pail stuff, right? Like Bobby Portis and guys, you know, chop wood, carry water. No, man, like glitz, glamour, three balls, outscore <laughs> the other team. New, new version of the Bucks. That was your, in your intro. Um, it definitely is a bit of a different feel this year with Dame and, and again, not just Dame, but, you know, kind of all across the board, right? You've got guys that are much more offensively inclined than the guys that we saw last year. So uh yeah i mean it was just a sight to see and again you know i think especially as games are going on again i'm always looking at those three point percentages because i'm always sort of saying like ah eh, you know like is, is this gonna kind of hold over a full game like you know is, is this lead like just a little bit of unsustainable stuff at the end of the day the point of basketball is to make shots exactly. uh you make more shots than the other guy uh you're probably gonna win the game <laughs> In the game, you know, usually the accounting like usually works out pretty well that way, depending on turnovers and free throws and all the other stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever we can say, the Bucks aren't going to shoot sixty percent every game. That's true, but at the end of the day, put the ball in the hole, and when you shoot the lights out as they did tonight, we've seen them do this a lot. Celebrate it, enjoy it. It was super fun, and for a team that we've you know often complained about the fact that like, well, they kind of play with their food and they don't. You know, the point differential isn't where we want it to be. And when's kind of that going to come home to roost? Things, you know, again, Chicago was was obviously not what we wanted to see last week um, in terms of a let up there. But since then, 
taking care of business. You get a double digit point, double digit win over the Hawks. And now you come back and you blow out the Knicks. And, you know, again, was not like a wire to wire blowout or something like that. Uh, but they always felt in control. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, they had the halftime lead. They led through most of the first half. And then early in that third quarter, we talk about kind of a little bit of what happened. I mean, basically it kind of turned around on a Giannis free throw possession. He made a free throw, then he missed a free throw. And because the Bucks, you know, get the rebound off Giannis misses three quarters of the time, it seems um, that teed up Chris Middleton three. And then I think it might've been a possession or two later, uh, get a side out. Chris throws one of his patented alley-oops to Giannis and kind of, you know, yeah. I mean, then, and, and so it kind of, that, that put out the lead out to double digits and, you know, Nick's got back within 10, um, a few times, but credit to the Bucks, like we said, all gas, no breaks. The shooting uh, never came back down to earth, and uh, you know, flying all the way to Las Vegas now. And you love to see it. You mentioned just the offensive firepower of this team. Giannis flirted with a triple double tonight: thirty-five points, Again. ten assists, eight rebounds. Like the man had himself a game. Dame had twenty-eight points himself with seven assists. He was five of seven from three. We've been talking about trying to see Dame warm up a little bit as he continues to play, and we're continuing to see that with him. But one thing that stands out to me with this team as well is we know that the team is top-heavy, quote-unquote. It's led by Giannis. It's led by Dame. You have Chris. You have Brooke. And yet and still, when you look at the numbers, Giannis had 10 assists. Dame had 7 assists. Chris Middleton had 7 assists. Like, these guys, of course, they're the head of the offense, but – they make it a point to make sure that they're passing the ball around, getting others involved. Malik Beasley shot 10 three-point attempts in this game. He had a game earlier this week where he shot 15 as well. So you're seeing him get the shots up. And I love to see how the Bucks are moving the ball around on offense and making sure it's not just the superstars who are getting their shots up. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Beasley was a guy we talked about early in the season, right? It's like, well, he's not, he's not getting many shots up with the starters, like, we talked about all the reasons, the defense, probably the biggest reason, like why Malik Beasley probably doesn't make sense as a starter. Mm-hmm. But give Malik Beasley a ton of credit. I mean, Absolutely. the guy's been a human torch for the past month. I think he's at like 66% true shooting or something like that for the season right now. You know, I think he's what his three point percentage has to be close to 50% right now. Um, and I thought, you know, again, his ceiling defensively is obviously not that high, right? He's got limitations. Um, you know, he's going to get caught flat footed a few times a game probably, but I thought, you know, especially in the first quarter, I really noticed like he was really trying to deny Jalen Brunson, the ball, you know, on the perimeter, just try to be physical with him, try to keep him from getting easy catches and getting into the offense. And, you know, Brunson, we saw killed the bucks last time. This time it was Julius Randall, who was horrendous. The last time these two teams played tonight, He's nine out of nine in the first half and just hit all the mid-range jumpers that he could find. But Brunson, ten, what, 10 out of 22 for 24 points? You live you know, with you that. Take, you take that every day, yeah. And I thought, you know, Beasley was the guy I matched up with him more often than not. And so, yeah, I mean, let's give let's give Beasley some credit. Uh, you know, we can obviously debate whether he's going to be the answer at, at the as the fifth starter you know when you play have to play the celtics or something in the playoffs um i think that's still a very fair question to ask uh, but he's done everything he can right he's trying he's working hard he's been having to play big minutes with the lack of wing depth that we've seen uh adrian griffin's just been mashing that malik beasley button play malik beasley get malik beasley three-point shots um and he's figured out a nice rhythm i think you know we talked about we saw so much about Giannis and Dame chemistry. And I think Giannis and Dame are starting to get better chemistry. You know, I think the most beautiful thing is when I see like side to side movement, Giannis in the middle mm-hmm. with Dame and Chris, and you can run into dribble handoffs um, that turn into, you know, pick and roll actions. Um, but then also like, I think feel, it does feel like Giannis is getting comfortable knowing how Malik, where Malik's going to be dribble handoffs with Malik Beasley for, to get him, uh, threes. He, he knows that he's going to take threes. Uh, it, it for me, it's kind of reminiscent of some of the chemistry that Giannis had with Bryn Forbes a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Because again, we talked about Grayson Allen needed some time to load up. Was not a high volume three point shooter in the way that Malik Beasley is. Forbes is probably the closest to that that Giannis has played with. And you you really kind of get the sense of Giannis now beginning to get comfortable knowing how to play off of Malik and get him shots. And you know, we, we've talked about it. like Giannis isn't always going to, you know, Giannis pick and roll with, with James. It's not always going to be just Giannis getting dunks and layups. 
there's an unselfishness that has to come with it because he's going to get the short roll and the defense is going to collapse and it's going to be up about getting other guys involved. Beasley's been a guy. We saw AJ Green get a three off of Giannis short roll that he kicked out. And I just thought like the decisiveness from Giannis, I think the you know, fact that he's had two, 10 assists the last two games, I think is reflective of him, him getting a little more comfortable about knowing where guys are, where they're going to be. And look, there's still like, feels like there's still like a split sec- a second of processing time. A lot of times mm-hmm. when Giannis catches it, you know, around the foul line, because the defense is coming and they want to take a charge and blah, blah, blah. Um, but again, starting to get better, starting to get that rhythm. And, you know, you see it in, in some of the numbers, like the starting five, I was just looking at it after the game tonight on the season now, plus 14.5 net rating. And Opponents are shooting 39% from three against them. I think they're about 40, 41%. So they're shooting a little bit better than opponents. But usually, especially early in the season, when you see these like crazy good, you know, lineup data, it's so often there's a lot of like three point variants like behind there. Like, oh, mm-hmm. the opponents are shooting 27% from three against them. It's like, okay, well, that's probably just some some luck, right? Because that's no defense is going to do that, like, you know, over over a really large sample. But it's been pretty normal in terms of those three point numbers for and against, and they're just killing dudes. <laughs> they're just kind of killing teams. <laughs> and over the last 10 games, they've put up a 134 offensive rating and their plus 22 net rating. So that's starting five. Again, not maybe not always the fastest starters, but we know they can close. Uh, we know they generally are, you know, again, other than the first quarter, every, all the other quarters, especially the fourth has been good. And Dame Giannis and Chris plus 17 net rating. I looked it up last year. Chris, Drew, and uh, Giannis plus eight. So, wow. you know, again, a little bit apples and oranges, and not not, not that you necessarily want to jump to to huge conclusions. But when the Bucks have their best players on the floor, they've been great. And I think the defense too, like the defense, I think was like a one hundred eight defensive rating with those that those three on the floor. So, um, I think in certain scenarios they've been pretty decent defensively. I think the problem is 48 minutes, as we saw again tonight, especially with the bench lineups. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of struggles out there. But, um, you know, again, they've been winning games all year. Now they're winning games and I think actually like playing sustained levels of high, higher, better <laughs> basketball. And obviously that's that's what you want to see. And, um, you know, again, we we probably need to pause and, and shout out Giannis. We talk, you mentioned Dame, but... Um, you know, let's just, again, make sure we appreciate Giannis's greatness because Absolutely. ho-hum, 35 points, 10 assists tonight, 15 out of 22. I mean, the efficiency this year has been awesome. And uh, initially stat there, last year he had 9.3 points per game in transition. This year it's only 6.7. So he's his transition numbers are way down. I mean, he's still way more efficient. He's averaging over 30 points a game. Big credit to him. I mean, he's really gotten it done in half court. And I think obviously having Dame probably now is starting to, to kind of shine through a bit, uh, but he's been awesome. And yeah, again, just feels like things are beginning to click a little bit defensively, a lot to work on still, but mm-hmm. when you win by 20 points, win by 10 points, 20 points, whatever, keep taking care of business. And again, hopefully the trajectory continues to, to go up. Absolutely. And it's not like the Bucks dropped 146 on a team that doesn't play any defense at all. The Knicks came into the game as one of the top defensive teams in the league, had the third best defensive rating entering to the game at 109. So like the Bucks, the Bucks put up some buckets on a team <laughs> that prides in themselves in defense. And it just didn't matter, which made me start thinking as I was watching the game, like, and I mentioned it on here before as well. Like, do we as Bucks fans need to kind of start to readjust? how we view this team and our expectations of this team. And I want to talk a lot more about that coming up after I talk a little bit about eBay Motors. So with eBay Motors, we've teamed up with them and as well with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks every single week all season long. So whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, Every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So we're going to take a look and see who Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Pick of the Week. 
Let's call out Patrick Williams, someone who the Bucks saw recently. With Patrick Williams back starting in Chicago and with a blow up on the cards, he may continue to see increased usage. And as we saw against the Bucks, Pat will, uh, when he's motivated, he can get some some buckets. He's an agile player, um, athletic, so he could be a, a sneaky fantasy play for you this upcoming week. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows the championship team is about each player being a perfect fit, the exact same with your vehicle. And we all know when something's wrong with your car, when your vehicle, it's it, it, it can give you just some anxiety. It can make you anxious because you're trying to figure out a way to get from point A to point B. But with eBay Motors, they have over 122 million different parts for your number one ride or die. You can make sure your ride always stays running smoothly. Doesn't matter if you're looking for brake kits, LED lights roof racks, bumpers, whatever it is that your car needs, eBay Motor has it. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the very first time, every single time, or you get your money back. Plus, with these prices, you'll be burning rubber and not cash. So make sure you keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers, uh, eligible items only, and exclusions do apply with this offer. Also want to take this time and talk to you a little bit about our friends over at uh, Locked On Sports. The Locked On Podcast Network does a lot. We cover the biggest stories across NFL, NBA, NHL, college sports. And now Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports today is here for you with 24-7 coverage of the top sports stories of the day with all the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Make sure you go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. As I mentioned, I've just been having a conversation with myself and thinking about this and talked about it a little bit um, here on Locked On Bucks so that everydayers might remember me saying this, but is it time for us to readjust expectations that we have for this team? We're so used to the Milwaukee Bucks being a defensive first led team under Bud. That's what we had. That's what we knew. So we leaned on. It was our bread and butter. We saw our defense pick up the times where our offense stalled. And we also saw the times where our offense stalled and defense still wasn't enough because we just couldn't get enough points in that game. Per the Bucks PR in this particular game, after they scored a season high 75 first half points in tonight's game, the Bucs scored 112 points through three quarters and finished with a season high 146 on the TNT broadcast. They mentioned the fact that this was the first time the Knicks have given up 37 points in each of the first three quarters since Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. Like the Bucs had 23 made three pointers in this game, which is the NBA season high on the season. Nine different Bucs made a three. Like this team has crazy offensive firepower right now so as I mentioned I've been thinking is it time for us to readjust how we view this team and I want to know how you're looking at this team now that we're about a quarter of the way through the season yeah I mean I think I think we've talked about it you know my sort of my hope you know like kind of where I hope that they can get to is can they get to like an average defense you know like again just thinking about it narrowly from like a defensive rating like ranking perspective um if they could get to like 15th I'd, I'd be pretty happy with it um you know and and then i think the the question is how elite can the offense get right uh they've been top five for for a while now um but you know over the past whatever it is couple weeks uh some of the performances obviously have just been pretty pretty off the charts so uh so yeah, I, I think this team, I mean, I, I think you would have predicted it early in the season, right? Like, or even in the preseason, right? That the thesis of this team has to shift a little bit. Um, I think, you know, one thing that was different about last year, I mean, they were generally prior to last year, always a very good offense in the regular season, right? Um, you know, last year was a bit of an aberration. And I think obviously Chris missing so much of the season was a big part of why they struggled offensively. But, uh, but I, I think again, last year, maybe the regular season felt more like what it always felt like in the playoffs. So maybe, you know, mm -hmm. it was a little bit interesting, right? Like it, it never felt like they were as good in the playoffs offensively as they were in the regular season. And then last year, kind of the regular season 
you know, regress back to what we were used to seeing in the playoffs. So maybe it felt more consistently like, boy, they, they are, you know, meh, kind of a meh offensive team, despite what the regular season offensive numbers typically said during the Bud era. So, uh, so yeah, I think effectively you're kind of turning it on its head a little bit. Um, and again, regular season identities, you know, how important is it when we know that the playoffs can oftentimes throw things out the window, right? As Bucks fans, we're always like ready to say, okay, all that great three point shooting that we got used to in the regular season, chuck it, not going to happen now. Guys are going to start, you know, turning into pumpkins and missing jump shots because the calendar has turned over to mid April and, and May and all that. Um, although I would note, the Bucks offense was actually like, like, especially some of their key guys, they actually scored a fair bit of points against the Heat. Um, it was more just, you know, the Heat kind of had, again, just their their shooting was just kind of crazy all, all series long last year. So, uh, so yeah, we'll see. But I think, yeah, I, I think I think the Bucks will tell themselves that they are still a defensive first team and that they pride <laughs> themselves on defense. And that's how they're going to win in the playoffs. You know, like I think that's what you'll continue to hear in the kind of post games and things like that, that, that they want to be a defensive first team. You know, Giannis, Brooke, obviously their DNA is – pride in their defense you know your coach is a guy who's always been a defensive minded coach um so i think yeah you kind of look at the offense and say hey awesome but we're not going to just take that as as kind of how we define ourselves realistically though uh, the whole point of getting dame was to give yourself the ability to again in the playoffs when push comes to shove just be able to team that you know was able to outscore the opponent down the stretch and win games that way and certainly the regular season has been uh, a proof of concept in that regard especially in clutch time and the results have obviously been really good but as we've also been saying hey i want more games like this where Mm -hmm. the lead gets stretched out and you know again they they kept the the regulars in kind of late it was sort of like hey you know you don't have to worry about point (laughs) point differential in this game but uh but anyway it didn't seem like it mattered who they put in Uh, shots just kept falling right so uh, no complaints about that, but but yeah, I think the the identity of this team has to change, and I think really the the big question is, you know, can they get to elite, elite, elite offense, and how does that carry to the playoffs? And then I think from a defensive standpoint, yeah, can they get to like average, and can they be average or you know when they really need it a little bit better in the playoffs? I think that's probably the big question for that. I'm, I'm again, a lot of my concerns are more just like looking at the roster and especially looking at the wings and guards that play and just be like, eh, it's kind of a, we're going to have a hard time being a great defense <laughs> given just the dudes you're playing. But the flip side is those are the guys that are also part of the reason why your offense is so good. Absolutely. I was, I have to say, when we did get our garbage time bench lineup in this game, I really was hoping for a Robin Lopez three. I really wanted the tea time celebration. But uh, we didn't get it tonight. But if you're watching on YouTube, you got to see the Frank Madden tea time celebration instead. So that that I mean, worked. it's more it's more. Sorry, I, the first one I did was it was not pronounced enough. It was more the like flip and then the the drink. So yeah, there you go. Just, uh, I, I I and I I'm 100 with you during because Robin played so much in the preseason. I was just like desperately hoping that he might get one. I don't think he got one in the preseason either. So um, it may be quite a while. Although I. I've been feeling a little bad, Camille. Have you have you noticed Robin's been posting about his like special uh, Giannis freak uh, his colorways? His, yeah, like his yeah. design shoes. They're you know predictably like cartoon themed, whatever. Um, and he's been like posting about it, but they never play. <laughs> so it's like hey. he got, he's got his special shoes, and then he's posts about them, and he's just like laying on the ground on the sideline. So shout out to Robin for actually getting to wear his, his shoes, uh, his cool fun shoes. In uh, in actual game action. Well, at least he doesn't he doesn't have to worry about those fun shoes getting all creased up and messed yeah, up. Yeah, I think he's thing. been continually wearing them. He, I don't think he's doing. Them. Yeah, because they're not getting much use. Yeah, <laughs> keep wearing your kicks. But one thing I do want to highlight, I did take a look just to see what the Bucks' highest offensive rating was under Bud, and it happened to be one seventeen point two during our championship season. That was sixth best in the league at that time. So I'll be really interested to see how that continues to trend in this season for this Bucks team, knowing that offense something they're going to have to lean their hat on. During that championship season, the Bucks had the fourth best net rating then at about 5.7. So we'll see how it is. Before this game, the Bucks' net rating was about 3.8. Might have climbed a bit after this game against the Knicks. But 
just something to keep in mind as we continue on throughout this season. And I want to end today's episode taking a look at that Vegas matchup against the Pacers after I talk a little bit more about our friends from game time. Game time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on your tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. Even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats. And that's perfect for someone like me. I spend a lot of time going back and forth. Like, do I actually want to go to this event? Do I not? Having an app like Game Time is really helpful to know that my light choices won't affect my ability to necessarily go to the events that I want to. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored events on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Plus, with zone deals, you can pick the section and Game Time can pick the seat for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNBA. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, Frank, with the Bucks winning tonight against the Knicks, they move on to Vegas into the quarterfinals uh, against the Indiana or the Indiana Pacers. The game is going to be at 4 p.m. Central Time on Thursday. It's a very early start for us, 4 p.m. Central Time on Thursday. In the last matchup against the Pacers, the Bucs lost 126 to 124. If you remember, that's the game that Giannis had 54, and there was no Dame in that game, which needs to be said. Uh, Pacers lead the league in scoring. They lead the league in second half scoring, and they lead the league in fourth quarter scoring. They do happen to be last in points allowed. But as we saw in that game against the Celtics, I mean, crunch time, they tightened up a little bit. One might argue or point out the fact that, you know, the Celtics half court offense just kind of shriveled up a little bit in that game. But that's not the point. We're not talking about the Celtics today. We're talking about the Pacers and this upcoming game against the Bucs. And when you look at this upcoming in season tournament game and it's Bucs and Pacers, you should expect a high scoring affair based on how these teams have been playing so far this season. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I thought it was going to be interesting to see, right, was how do the Bucks fare the second time they see teams, right, with new coaching staff, some new personnel, right? You get some film, get some experience, right? I, th- I was most curious with the Raptors and the Hawks, right, because those mm-hmm. were those two games that probably were the most disappointing in terms of just Bucks just getting the doors blown off them. And they come back, they go back to Toronto, they win in a, you know, very convincing fashion in Toronto. You got some Malik Beasley, hula hoop, wiggle, dancing in that game. Um, And then they come back and again, a little less convincing against the Hawks uh, over the weekend, but came back, took care of business against the Hawks, beat them. Um, And so, you know, again, the the first time these teams met, no Dame, of course, uh, your firepower (laughs) fairly limited by by that absence. So going into this matchup with with having your full complement of guys, uh, you know, especially the way these two teams play, unfortunately, you know, three point variance is probably going to tell a lot of the story about who's ultimately going to win this game. Um, so that's, that's kind of my hope coming in other than the fact that I hope the bucks win. Um, I hope that both teams, you know, shoot well, but not too well from three. Um, it would suck if, you know, the Pacers shoot 48% from three and the bucks, you know, just have a brick fest or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of, that's all the story, but, uh, but yeah, so let's kind of see what happens. Just looking at the numbers, um, you know, obviously we talked a bit about the Bucks and some of the improvement that we've seen from them. Uh, so last 17 games, the reason why I look at the last 17 games, that was starting with the, the first Knicks game, right? That game um, that we saw uh, the kicking off sort of the, the in-season tournament, right? Talking about the Knicks as well. You know, again, getting a second look at the Knicks. First time, not the most convincing performance, right? Kind of felt like they should have pulled away in that game. They didn't. Tonight they do pull away and they win convincingly. So over the past 17 games, right? That's most of the season, right? The Bucks have only played 21 games. You look at the the last 17. Um, mm-hmm. 
120.7 offensive rating for the Bucks. They're at about 119.2 right now for the whole season. So not surprising. They've been better offensively. That's the third best offensive rating over that span. Uh, the Pacers have a 126 offensive rating in that span. They're at over 123 offensive rating. So they're by far uh, the first overall, you know, first overall in offense. But the Bucs are just uh, just behind second place right now. So the Bucs are definitely creeping into that, again, the uber, mm-hmm. uber elite category that that we'd like to see them in offensively. And over the past, you know, again, most of the season are 17 games, 13 and four record, 121 offensive rating and 114.4 defensive rating. That's the same defensive rating as the Philadelphia 76ers in that span. I think the Bucs are, yeah, basically tied with the Sixers for 12th or 13th in defense over that span. I am not going to look at that and tell you that the Bucs are like suddenly like, oh no, problem solved. They're now a good defense. They're now, they're now above average defense. I want to see that kind of continue to play out over a longer period. They've had some, I think, favorable scheduling um, during some of that period as well. Uh, but, you know, again, like let's, let's, let's glass half full it tonight uh, of all nights. Um, you know, looking in that span, they're 13 and four. Uh, the Boston Celtics are 11 and five in that span. And the Boston Celtics have a 5.5 net rating and the Bucs are, are at 6.3. So, um, you know, again, like I think some perspective is is always sort of helpful when, when we take a look at, at some of this data. And, um, you know, again, I you can't just throw out like part of the season and say like, well, if you take out the bad part, then they look really good <laughs> um, and say like, oh, they're now the best team in the East or something. Um, I, I was actually part of me. I mean, I never root for the Celtics under any circumstances. I'm not going to lie, Camille. I was, I don't know how you feel about it. I was, I was kind of actually rooting on some level. Okay. On some level, I was rooting for the Celtics. I wasn't actually rooting for the Celtics because I just can't allow myself to do that Got against the Pacers. But I actually thought it would be probably more interesting as a basketball fan, given what we are expecting for the playoffs. It would have been more interesting to see the Bucks play the Celtics just to get another bite at the apple. And again, testing our theory here that the Bucks seem to be learning from the second matchups, uh, all the games that they've played here, you know, when they get a second crack at a team, uh, they seem to to have learned something, hopefully, um, and play better. So hopefully that'll happen against the Celtics as well. We we almost had a game here uh, later this week against Boston. Instead, we'll get the Pacers. Hey, that's fine. Whatever. You know, you win a game, that's that's good enough. And uh, you know, again, I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. Uh, I'm I'm probably most curious to see how the Pacers defend Giannis after last game. Me too. We saw Miles Turner just like got roasted all game long. Then late, they started putting smaller guys on Giannis, doubling, letting Turner kind of hang back a little bit, protect the rim. Again, I always think that's probably a better option, kind of letting your big man, your rim protector, play as a help guy rather than putting him on Giannis. We'll be interested to see if they try that from the start in this game. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Malik Beasley, have fun with Ty- Tyrese Halliburton. You know, you're you're our defensive stopper. Good job tonight <laughs> against Jalen Brunson now. Uh, you get to play against, you know, a guy that's having one of the best seasons in the league right now and just yeah. an historically crazy outlier season, the numbers he's putting up. Uh, Oshkosh's very own Tyrese Halliburton. He's been incredible. Um, and so I think, yeah, hopefully he has an off shooting night on Thursday. Uh, and hopefully the Bucks can attack him as well because he is uh, not a good defender. Um, and obviously the Pacers don't really have any illusions about how they're going to win basketball games. Uh, there's been no need to readjust how the Pacers are going to win in games. That that's always been clear that that's just an offensive first team, but, um, yeah, should be a fun game, fun matchup and weird early start time. I think I'm going to be at an airport waiting to fly back home to Texas at that time. Um, so, uh, I'll be watching probably on my phone while sitting at a gate, but so it goes, um, going to Vegas. Camille, no, no complaints about that. Hey, have fun with that. And I mean, this game should be really fun. Like you mentioned, Tyrese Halliburton is having himself quite a season. And the Pacers are a team that have really gotten up for these end season tournament games. You saw the emotion coming out of them against that in that game against the Celtics. Like they really wanted that victory. And part of it's because they don't get much time on national TV and they understand that, hey, 
with these games, we're going to get national exposure on top of the whole fact that they get to be in Vegas in December during the NBA season. Not a lockout season, nothing weird going on. Like they get to be in Las Vegas in December and have a chance to win a half a million dollars. So that matchup is going to be fun. Of course, here on Lockdown Bucks, we're going to be taking a deeper look into that matchup for Thursday's episode of the pod. And before we get out of here, Camille, oh, can I give can I give one shout? We didn't really talk about Brooke Lopez tonight. Um, three blocks, three steals. You know, again, another night where I would say the opponent point total wasn't a reflection of of the defense that he was playing. Box, the boxing out on Mitchell on Mitchell Robinson, I thought mm-hmm. obviously he deserves a lot of credit for that. And he was a game high plus twenty eight, right? And again, an offensive first game where he only scores nine points. Um, I don't think it's coincidence that he was a plus twenty eight. Again, just Brooke doing Brooke stuff. And, uh, you know, again, shout out to shout out to the old man, Brooke Lopez, uh, for getting to be the anchor of of that defense, which, again, still a lot to be worked on there. Uh, transition defense in particular, the the first shot uh, half court defense was actually pretty good. A one oh one offensive rating, but too many offensive rebounds and uh, too mm-hmm. many league outs. But um, again, uh, we'll we'll keep it a glass half full on uh, a victorious Tuesday night. Absolutely. So big shout out to Brooke and also big shout out to Locked On Sports today. As a reminder, make sure that you head over to the Locked On Sports Today YouTube page and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. For Frank and myself, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back with more action for you guys on Locked On Bucks throughout the week. So stay locked in.